Our veterans need your support. Foxfield Farm for a Recovery Mission is a not-for-profit organization that has been established to provide an equestrian groundwork training program for U.S. veterans with PTSD and related issues incurred through military service. This curriculum will be offered at absolutely no cost to any veteran participating in the program. This foundation will also incorporate the repurposing of rescue horses and locating new responsible owners. The synergy of the work invested by the veterans to aid the recovery of these horses is equitably therapeutic. Please go to our website to be a supporter, www.foxfieldrecoverymission.org. Thank you. Hello, and thank you for joining me today. I have as my guest, and we are in his studio, Brad Davis. He is the venerable icon of Connecticut's radio world. Brad, I had a hard time determining how to introduce you. Not because there wasn't anything to say, for sure, but because any moniker applied to you would be an understatement of your public persona. So I'm delighted to be here with you today. I hope we're going to have a uh, candid conversation. I know there are a lot of interesting things to know about you. So let's, let's just start out. Uh, so many people know you, if only audibly. They listen to you on the radio. But many others who personally have made your acquaintance and acknowledge their, your support of the underprivileged. You're a devout patriot. You're a tireless fundraising host. You're a champion of the disadvantaged and a voice of the people. Tell, tell us about your early childhood and how you got into this radio. Well, I, my early childhood, I was uh, raised on my grandfather's dairy farm. But how I got into this business, uh, I hadn't planned on a career in uh, radio and television. But I had a good friend. My grandfather used to have a big milk route, and I used to go with him to deliver milk in Hazardville and that area mm -hmm. of, uh, of Enfield. And one of our customers was uh, the, the Wilson family. And Bud Wilson uh, was a radio announcer who started in, uh, in Springfield. And uh, he was big out in Chicago. And mm -hmm. so uh, one day when I was delivering milk, he was home. And he said to me, he said, uh, why don't you come up to me, come with me up to the radio station one day? And I said, God, that'd be terrific. You know, I didn't know where yeah. he was taking me. So yeah. we went to Springfield. And he would come home and say thank you to the first guy that hired him at, uh, at a Springfield yeah. radio station. And so he would do an hour, an hour, hour of music. And uh, uh, Coca-Cola was the sponsor of the hour. So halfway through, he said, you know, I brought a friend of mine <laughs> with me who's a farmer right. that lives on a farm. Yeah. Uh, Brad Davis, yeah. and so I said, you know, I said, Bud, th the only thing I'm going to question is uh, you're, you're talking about Coca-Cola, and the greatest refreshment in the world to me mm -hmm. is milk. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's, that's what I drink all the time. Well, the general manager was listening, and he came into the studio <laughs> and said, who is that person by, with you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but that right. is telling us that milk is the greatest and, and Coca-Cola is paying for the hour. Right. So <laughs> that was the last time I was <laughs> invited <laughs> up there. However, yeah. when I did get home to the farm, yes. my grandmother said, somebody from Hartford has called you. Okay. I said, well, I don't know anybody in Hartford. Right. So she said, well, this is the number. And I called him back uh -huh. and it was Leo Kaufman. Okay. Now, you know, his son does all these commercials, uh, you know, okay. he's, he's all over the place. Yeah, yeah. And 
So anyway, he said, Brad, he said, I, I would like to see you and meet you. He said, we are starting a dance program right. in, in yes. September okay. and is sponsored by the dairy farmer members of Connecticut Milk for Health. Yeah. And he said, I heard you talking at this station. I happened to have the yeah. radio on going right. to Springfield about milk. And he said, this is what we want. We'd love to have you come and audition sure. for this is going to be a, a great dance profile show. with young people. You sure. know, and, and so uh, I said, look, I said, I don't even know what a television camera looks like. I don't know anything about television. <laughs> he says, please, just come down. So we went down to uh, uh, TIC. Right. And it was in the old building, okay? Right. So I met him there, and there were three other guys there. And we where I was handed the first national jacket. So evidently we were going to try to sell some first national <laughs> okay. stuff. And they had, and I was the last one to go. There was four, four guys. I was the last one. And uh, it, was, it was so bad. I was so bad. Oh, no. Well, I was looking up. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> they were reading the prompter. They were just I'd off the farm, lost yeah. In the, lost in the prompter. <laughs> And it was so bad, I heard the engineers in the studio laughing. Like, right. where did they get this character, <laughs> you know? So I got upset after the fourth take, and I sure. said, I'll tell you something. I said, I've never done this before. I don't know anything about cameras or what I'm supposed to read. I said, however, I said, in this basket here, I said, you got some friend's beans. And I picked them up, yeah. and I said... Uh, this is the only thing here that's familiar, I said, because my grandmother, every Friday night, she serves us baked beans, brown bread, and hot dogs. Okay. And I always remember uh, that week that she does it because she soaks her beans on a Wednesday and uh, molasses goes oh, in. Whole, the oh, she, the whole whole, she makes the whole oh, thing. Okay. And she always added a can of Friends beans. So if my grandmother used them, these beans must be good beans, and they were. They were delicious. Yeah. So, your Leonard Patricelli, yes. he was evidently in the station at the mm -hmm. time and was listening to some of these auditions mm -hmm. and uh, heard mine evidently with the other ones and got some laughs out of it how ridiculous <laughs> I was. But he did say, he said, this is the one we got to hire. He knows what he's talking about. And he that's thought how, you were a salesman. And that's yeah. how I got the job, yeah. s selling milk. And I, uh, when I go out to speak, if I had to sell something else, uh, you know, some other product, that I'd, I, would, I would still be on the farm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, wouldn't be, <laughs> I wouldn't be in this, this business. People but, missed uh, out with a lot and, of entertainment. And that's how, I, that's how I started. Yeah, yeah. That's, in 19, uh, yeah, way, that's, back, um, way back when, 58 when that, years ago. Yeah, I was going to say, it's nearly 60 years you've been there. What, what would you say has been the most instrumental impact on your media career? I mean, is there a person, is there a situation? I mean, has there been something that stands out to you? Well, what really stands out as far as when I started, mm. and that's where I started, mm. was, uh, was Channel 3 uh, doing a, a dance show for teenagers. How long did that run, Brad? That ran for, uh, let me see, from 58 until 69. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I did went into what's happening and so on and so forth. But mm -hmm. but that was the, the show that got me started. And I met right away, I bumped in to Bob Steele. Right. And Bob Steele, to me, was the greatest that was ever on yeah. radio. He was, no just, doubt about it. he was just it. And uh, so we got along, we got along well, and uh, then, you know, I auditioned mm -hmm. to see if I could get part-time there or something. Mm -hmm. So I passed that audition, mm -hmm. and they put me with Steele. You know, you do different day parts, yeah. but, but he used to take uh, an interest. What a interest. mentor, though, he was. Oh, and he took an interest. Yes. And I'll never forget, he said to me, he said, Brad, he said, there are going to be people that like you and people that don't. That's true. But there's one thing you've got to do. You've got to know what you're selling. The commercial is the most important thing. He said, you should be so familiar with a product that you're selling that the only thing you should have to write down is the name of the address of the company right. and also the telephone number people can call. Right. 
So that was steel. That's yeah. how steel, and, and I have to say, uh, today, uh, doing commercials, and I do quite a few sure. of them every single sure. morning, that, that's, that's how I do it. So you them. really use the products? And you oh, I, you, I, yeah. I, in, in fact, it's, it's so funny you ask that one. Yeah. Recently, I've been talking about my pillow. Yes. And uh, how that started, it was only supposed to last right. a, a month. And but I, I said I said I will do this, but I want to sleep on take it. the sure. pillow home to see how yeah, it is because everybody enough. was raving about it, right? And and so on. So I did, and I came in and I started the commercials, mm -hmm. and it's just a fabulous product, and yeah. I'm still talking it's, about it's it. It's easy <laughs> to sell something when you believe in oh, it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you're being if you if you're well, faking you think, it, I it doesn't work. Then you think of uh, also the the people. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to sell somebody something right. and just for the sake of the money right and, and it's not good for them yeah but you know there's the association because if you start selling something and they people people know you so well and if they say hey brad i tried that that thing was a piece of crap yeah you know that's that, that doesn't do anything for no your no image. i know i know no no you they, know, they, so they, you're right is, you've got to believe in your product and the audience is they're fabulous they're but that's great. what's made you so well versed in helping people fundraising and stuff because when you're in the public eye and you're at some black tie affair and people want to get something sold or they're doing a you know a, uh, some sort of bidding thing you are able to make well, people believe in this thing is really worth having but that's another another story too because mm -hmm. that happened at channel three uh, mm -hmm. when i was there and we went to the etna one night uh, for a fundraiser. Yes. And there was uh, four of us, and one of them was Gail King. Okay. When she was at uh, yes. at uh, Channel 3. Then there were two others and myself. Mm -hmm. And it was an auction. Right. They had an auction. Right. So uh, everybody went, well, Gail went first. I remember she went first, great voice and everything, but she was an auctioneer. and. and so it was, uh, they came to me, it was last. Well, when I was on the farm, mm -hmm. my grandfather's best friend was a fellow by the name of Mort Granger, the greatest cattle auctioneer in New England. Oh, yeah. And I used to go down in the pasture with him on a Sunday when he was rehearsing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So I'd listen to him, and uh, this was every Sunday. Yeah. And when I went home, back to the farmhouse, I used to go up in my bedroom and stand in front of the mirror and imitate him. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Just just for fun. Yeah, just right. for fun. Right. So that night when we were doing, doing this the auction, thing, when we were yeah. doing this thing at the Etna, right. this was an auction and I was the last one and nobody was auctioneering. And you know, I said to myself, I said, I'm gonna do what Mort Granger did. <laughs> okay. okay? Yeah. And I was uh, selling what was I selling? I, I think it was uh, ketchup. I think I, I had some ketchup because they had all kinds of things. Oh, kind of like a use for a picnic, yeah, a variety yeah, yeah. of things. So yeah. I did. I've got some ketchup here. And let me tell you, how much will you give me for the ketchup? Will you give me five? Will you give me ten? Oh, that lady in the first. So I did. Right, 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 right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I and, bet they really loved it too. Oh yeah, yeah. and it was fun. <clears throat> and in the audience, it was a big mm -hmm. audience that night. When I got to the station. Uh, in the next few days, I started to get calls from people that were there. Will you come out? We're having a fundraiser. Mm -hmm. Could you do what you did? Can you do an auction? Yeah, we'll do right. an auction. I said, yeah. I said, I'll try it. So I went out, and from then on, every was, time I did a fundraiser, <laughs> I was the auctioneer. Yeah. I was yeah. the auctioneer, yeah. and I'll never forget when Scott Haney yes, right. came to Channel 3. Right great guy and a, and, and a good friend mm -hmm. and he is auctioneering now and he's you know yeah, yeah. and he knows how because we we did a couple together when yeah. we first when we first met but uh so that's you know that's how that happened well you know the thing is is that i think your personality comes across as you don't take yourself too seriously and i think that people can identify with you because you appear to be i mean you're a well-known icon and you know people go g brad davis and so forth but then when they talk to you you're a regular guy, and you can identify with that because you you have intimated that it was uh, a humble beginning that you started from, 
and you seem to be able to identify with people and well, I, I you know, and, and it's a genuine liking of people. Well, I I, I, don't, I don't know about that, but I, yeah. I do know that I uh, I get out a lot. Mm -hmm. I meet a lot of a mm -hmm. lot of folks, mm -hmm. and uh, but I, I go back to uh, I go back to Bob Steele. Mm -hmm. uh, he was the one that set this all in because uh, he you know yeah if you drop something you drop something and you bend over and you pick it up right. I mean, you don't say, oh, my God. Right, you know. <laughs> right. You carry on. Yeah, you carry you're doing on. It and it's just... Uh, well, you have a very diversified group of listeners. I mean, uh, what, what would you say? What, what's the demographic of your listeners? Would you be able to you know, identify I don't that? know. I would mm -hmm. say uh, uh, probably uh, uh, middle age. Okay. You know. But it's been over a long period of time, so that oh, means yeah, you've covered been, generations. Well, it's, it's People been, have followed uh, you for a long time. It's been, it's been fifth, this is my 58th year. Yeah. yeah. And right here at... Uh, at WDRC, it's uh, it's going into its 41st year that I've been in. I work with Dan Lavallo. Mm -hmm. We've worked together. He's been a friend for a long time and a great broadcaster. Mm -hmm. So that's recently we started that together. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's still, you know, it's still fun. <laughs> well, <clears throat> in, in all of the things that you have defended and that you supported and so forth, what stands out to you as some of the most deserving? In other words, what do you believe to be a few of the most critical cultural challenges in today's society that we have? Well, I, uh, I think law and order, all this, and, and I look back and remember, and remember when somebody who was accused of murder mm -hmm. and was in jail did not do it. But they had to arrest somebody up in Springfield, Massachusetts. And this uh, woman, mm -hmm. older woman, in her early 80s, was murdered. Okay. And the young man that was working at the building, it mm -hmm. was, uh, you know, where people, where people uh, were living, uh, was a, 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 young, a young black American. And... Uh, his name was Russell Daniels, mm -hmm. and he was very, very troubled. In fact, he was retarded, mm -hmm. and he was in his early 20s, but he had the mind of a nine-year-old. Okay. And they couldn't find, or they just thought because he was up there, yes. and and they were checking times when mm, somebody was mm, here and so, mm. and they arrested him. They arrested him, and he ended up in in prison in Massachusetts, okay. Norfolk prison, mm -hmm. and uh, we got a call from a law professor in Springfield because that's what we were doing with sure. John Sablon. We right. were doing this yes. on television. Yes. Okay, he what's happening? He was a good happening? friend of yours. What's happening? Oh, yes, dear time. friend. He yeah. retired. A good friend. And so this was something that we started to look into, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, he said, I'm telling you, Brad, he said, this kid did not do it, but they needed somebody. Right. Because the people were going crazy mm -hmm. because they, right. it was this older woman. Yeah, sure. They want to pin it quickly. So anyway, we started. Okay? Yeah. We started, and uh, it took us a long time. Oh, six, seven, eight weeks at least. We had everything. We went to Springfield all the time. We had everything but the half hour when the murder was committed. We couldn't place Russell Daniels, who was in prison right, for it. We right. couldn't place him. Okay. Uh, during that particular half hour, mm -hmm. anywhere. And we always stopped on the way back, after a day's work, mm -hmm. we always stopped at Howard Johnson's on the way back to, uh, to Enfield. Okay. We'd go in there with the crew and we'd sit down. Sure. Well, this particular day, we did. Okay, and, someone saw and, and there was a, a woman, and they recognized us, Brad, okay. uh, yep. Davis, and yep. so forth. 
and John Sablon. And they said, what are you doing here? What, what is all with all the equipment and everything? What I said, well, I said, uh, we're about ready to close out what we're doing. Well, she said, what is it? I said, well, we are trying to discover, trying to disco discover a young black man who is in prison and was accused of killing this woman in Springfield. And the waitress. Here's the alibi. One yeah. of the waitresses there said, you don't mean Russell Daniels. I said, yeah, he's in prison. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she said, we know that. I said, but, I said, we don't think he did it. And uh, we, we can't find a particular time. And the time and the day is a Friday. Mm -hmm. It was always on a Friday between sure. 1 and 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. She said, you're talking about Russell Daniels? I said, yeah, he's in prison. She said, I know. She said, every Friday, he used to come down here and have a vanilla milkshake. I said, what? She said, yes. She said, it would be between 12 and 1 o'clock. I said, well, why didn't you say something <laughs> yeah, right. when you knew? She said, well, we didn't want to get involved. Yeah, they, they don't want to expose okay. themselves to. So we broke the case. Wow. Okay. We. They we, find out who did it? They never found out who did wow. it. But they charged, that's what, mm. that was the reason they went for this, uh, this young man who yep. he'd say yes to anything. Yeah, of course. Because, because he, was, he, he was retarded, retarded. partly retarded. Yeah. Wasn't there any kind of defense counsel for him of some I, kind? Uh, they had uh, not, no, because no? the, the, the dis district State? attorney was the kind of a guy that he didn't even think about that at yeah. the time, okay? Yeah. So that was the end of what mm. we had done that day, and we made the documentary. Yeah. Made the documentary. So do you think that's still happening today? You think that this oh, is... Oh, I, uh, I, <clears throat> I think there's a lot of that today. Mm -hmm. We don't hear about it. But, I mean, if somebody... At, and we won the Columbia DuPont Award mm -hmm. on that presentation, is which, that is, right? which is something that uh, I'll always be proud of mm. with John. Do you think we're going to be able to get rid of this racism? Are we going to be able to... Oh, no, I think, I think now... Mm. Now it is probably it seems to have escalated. It is probably worse than it has been <coughs> for a long time. What, what do you think that's due to? You know, you know, and and the, and the funny thing is with me, I grew up my grandfather's farm, and I never, uh, and I we never thought of black and white or I mean, Bill Jones mm -hmm. uh, used to work uh, on the farm with my grandfather. Uh, his son mm -hmm. was my best friend in, in high school. Right. Uh, and anyway, so it was something that never bothered me. And I'll never forget mm. a high school trip that we went, Enfield High School. We went down to Washington. And uh, I remember we had to go to the men's room. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Bill Jones was my buddy, and we were all together. <laughs> so Bill had a, two. He had to go to the men's room. Mm -hmm. And so... We both started in, and they said, you can't go in there, meaning me. Oh. You can't go in there. I said, what are you talking about? i got to go to the men's room. Yeah. He said, yeah, but there's one for you down the hall. Oh. This is just for Segregated. for, for uh, uh, Negroes. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, really? <laughs> I said, well, he is my best friend, and that's where I'm going okay. with him. Mm -hmm. So the guy didn't know what to do. Well, oh. I went in there yeah. with Bill, came out. And that, because we had never even thought of that. Yeah. Never was brought up that way. Yeah. And I'll never forget it. Never it, ever. Every, forget everybody's every everybody's thought process is based on their experiences. And yet, and you know, your experience was is that it was didn't mean anything, and other people. No, had other I mean, uh, I was. Yeah, I, you have to make allowances on both sides. I huh? think I think you have to make allowances on both sides. Some people have not had good experiences, and then some people. Oh, absolutely. There's, there's nothing. Yeah. Well, look, you you uh, you play polo at one point. During yeah. your, uh, yeah. tell, tell us a little bit Four about that. Four years. Yeah, okay. Up at Shallow Brook in Summers. Okay. And, and tell us how that. <laughs> and you play polo, yes, too. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Up there with Hal Vita, yeah, yeah. for a long yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, so tell us, what you had an, had an accident or something? Or well, I grew, I grew up on a farm. Yeah. I grew up in a farm yeah. and, uh, you know, always rode 
courses. Right, I had, right. you know, so yeah. that was nothing. Right. So I learned, but I had, uh, yeah, I had a quite an accident yeah. at a game. Yeah. And uh, it was at Shallowbrook. It was mm -hmm. inside, and uh, we were playing. I forget the team, but it was a college team, and, and sure. it was mainly yeah, it was, it was probably you know, UConn or and, somebody. Uh, yeah, and women. Right. Women played men, and it was, yep, it was yep, you know, yep. you, you've done the same thing. Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, it was <clears> inside because in the winter we played inside. We had a big mm -hmm. arena inside at Shallowbro. Mm -hmm. Outside in the summer we play on free horses mm -hmm. in the wintertime, but four, as you know. Right, outdoors. Outside, yeah. Right. So anyway, uh, I got, I was coming around the, uh, a bend, and uh, I could have really, really done a number. You know, because you hit with the horses. Right. And I took it easy, and she was absolutely through the roof. She says, oh, you're one of those. I said, what do you mean? She said, you were one of those. You didn't want to really Bump me. give it to me because yeah. I'm a woman. Oh. I said, well, I said, I, I wasn't even thinking of that. Yeah. Well, anyway, before it was over, we were in a, going into the third chucker. Yeah. Okay? Right. Third period. And she hit me oh. so hard. I mean, I mean, really. Right, right. I had to have this hip replaced. Wow. I had to have the hip replaced. And uh, so you never actually came off. Huh? You were just hit hard. Yeah, she. Oh. Yeah, right into the wall. Wow. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, this was indoors. And looked yeah. around at me. Wow. And that was it. Mm. So I'll never forget. Didn't miss any work Look. or anything, though, because it was this, this, yeah. this leg. Yeah. yeah. And. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, I had to, to have it operated on, mm -hmm. and they operated uh, on uh, at Mount Sinai Hospital. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And uh, that's Well, you're why. looking good, fellow, now. Huh? You're looking good shape now. Well, I you're, feel, you're, you're I, I am. I well, I've got, I've got very quickly, we've got one more question to ask you. What do you think about the political scene for 2018, our gubernatorial race? Uh, you know something? This is going to be, I think, a, I'm happy we got so many candidates. Yes. I have, mm -hmm. very, very. And uh, I haven't looked at them all yet. We're, we're, we're doing mm -hmm. a lot Working of them. Dan it. and I are doing a lot of them on our radio program. Right. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to say who it is right now, mm -hmm. but I have got a good idea mm -hmm. who I think mm -hmm. would make a tremendous governor. Mm -hmm. And I will say it. Uh, when the time is when right. The, when the time is right. <laughs> well, uh, it's, it's been a real pleasure. Well, this has been, to you no, this yeah, has been, we this have is, to do it again. This has been fun. And Let's I, do it after the governor's race or something when we're getting close. That's okay. Is that good? Because yeah. then you'll be able to maybe make some more comments yeah. about it. Yeah, we can. I well, will it's then. been a, it's been great, Brad. Well, thank you. Yeah, been terrific. Thank you. All right. So, <clears throat> Patrick Sully put me in it. the business. Well, there you go. All right, <laughs> we're we're going to uh, we're going to be uh, open and above board about that. That is my uncle. So I will state it for the record. All right, I want to give you your website. It's talk, talkofconnecticut.com uh, forward slash the Brad Davis Show. Do I have that right? Yes. Okay, yeah. well, good. And our website is ctvalleyviews.com. <clears throat> and I want to thank you for joining me today, and Brad, and uh, I look forward to seeing all of you again soon. And uh, thank you for joining me and bringing proof to the people. Today